Welcome to Jesus Manuel Menagarza, photography, video, and audio. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm originally from San Jose, California. I've also lived in Austin and the LA area. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you are. In this edition, I'll be talking about uh, exhibiting your photographs and what I've had to go through to exhibit my photographs. This is essentially valuable information for the newbie. For those of you who have exhibited a thousand times, uh, just move on from this. This is essentially, again, for newbies. I started exhibiting my photographs back in the late 60s when I was in high school at San Jose High School. And then I continued to exhibit my work at San Jose State University and at various galleries in the San Jose and San Francisco area. I exhibited uh, the summer I was going to uh, university in 1970. I started school in the fall of 1970, but that summer I had an exhibition of my photographs uh, at uh, San Jose State University in the Student Union. Uh, eventually, uh, I started exhibiting again in San Francisco. I was very well known in the uh, Chicano community, the Hispanic community from what you might call us, uh, back in the early 70s. And I was very much, uh, a lot of my photographs that are currently exhibited were taken between 1970 and 1975. A lot of my documentary photographs of the Chicano community. I also exhibit some photographs in other area, genres like landscapes, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, other portraits, uh, and other documentary work, okay? But typically, the great majority of folks that want to exhibit my work or show my work want to show my historic photographs taken in uh, 1970 through 1975. Uh, primarily important people like uh, Cesar Chavez, who you see behind me, Corky Gonzalez, and other important figures in theater performances and people involved in the communities of San Jose, LA, and such, okay? So I have an important archive, I consider important, and other people consider important, archive of documentary photographs that, uh, you know, uh, elicit individuals to ask me, say, hey, would you like to show it here? And I've exhibited those uh, photographs again in Galeria de la Raza in uh, San Francisco at Mission Arts Center in uh, San Francisco at El Centro Cultural de la Gente in San Jose, at uh, the Chicano Film Institute, both organizations that I was involved with back in the early 70s, and etc., etc. et cetera. Eventually, I graduated San Jose State University with a degree in journalism, with a photojournalism emphasis. They did not have a quote-unquote photography degree. Even though for about a year I had a hiatus, I went to the San Francisco Art Institute on scholarship and studied fine art photography. I went down there, I think it was 74 through 75. I was down there uh, taking classes. Uh, one of my instructors was Imogen Cunningham, a very famous uh, landscape and fine art photographer. She was one of the lecturers there. I was very lucky uh, going through high school to have two excellent photography instructors. <clears throat> one of them introduced me to the Hasselblad, which you see right there. <laughs> Uh, I started shooting with the Hasselblad. I borrowed his Hasselblad back in high school. An expensive camera even at that time. So, uh, uh, and also Prospero Anaya. Prospero Anaya <clears throat> and uh, Ron Root were my two photography instructors. They took me to galleries in San Francisco, a 45-minute drive. We would go to galleries and check out exhibitions and such in high school. And we'd also go to uh, Carmel, which is about a little over an hour away, and check out, again, museums, galleries, even look at other, uh, visit the studios of photographers in the Del Monte and Carmel area, especially photographers of the F64 group, a very important group for classic photography. So I was exposed to this, and this was my main influence going into high school. As I was going through high school, I uh, was the school photographer, obviously, and I took photographs for the yearbook and also for the newspaper. The list goes on and on, and I had a great time doing that. So when in high school, 
if you have certain skills, people say, Jesus, can you take a photograph of me? So I would photograph some of the women and men that wanted to be photographed, taking portraits of, uh, you know, and I had a great time. Again, I had a great time. I am a photographer because I enjoy taking photographs. It's not a chore to me. It's not something that's difficult for me. So because I had this incredible education in high school, incredible education in, in college, I learned quite a bit about the technology and the aesthetics of photography. Most of my instructors in college that were uh, in the photography department, outside of photojournalism department, the photography department were uh, classically trained photographers. They were all admirers of Ed Weston, Ansel Adams, Imogen Cunningham, etc., etc. My photojournalism instructor was a Texan uh, with a very thick <laughs> Texan accent. That was at San Jose State University. And he was very serious about photojournalism and covering the news. You take that photograph and you bring it to the newsroom and make sure you got something that sh you know showcases the event or the experience or the game, etc., etc. So I learned a lot about uh, photography from both sides. Journalism, you know, uh, editorial photography, uh, uh, photography, and also fine art, uh, classical landscapes, etc., etc. So I had a good, well-rounded, I think, I think, uh, education in photography. My junior year in high school, of course, what did I get a, a job doing? I got a job working in TV as a sportscaster, of course. So I worked at uh, KSBW TV in uh, Salinas, working as a sportscaster. I was a lousy sportscaster. I did not know anything about sports. You know, I everybody always said, you take some good video, he says, you take some good video. Uh, but as a sportscaster, I was mediocre. Then I moved on to working in radio news, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy radio news. So I was a radio news person, an anchor reporter and uh, also I did I was a DJ I worked six days a week they really abused me and used me at that radio station K-O-M-Y radio uh, in uh, Watsonville Santa Cruz area so I worked there for I think it was five years that was quite a while and uh, but then eventually I moved on to Silicon Valley back around 1980 and I started my own business I had an office had a photo studio, had a dark room, had all this equipment. I had a Hasselblad, just like you see there. Uh, I have had various iterations of Hasselblad and 4x5 that I used in my studio. So coming back from uh, the Santa Cruz area to back to San Jose, people said, Jesus, why don't you exhibit your work? We would love to see some of your photographs. We know you were at El Centro Cultural de la Gente. You exhibited there. We know you exhibited in San Francisco quite a bit. Why don't you exhibit for us right now? And I, I would 99.9% .9 of the time say, no, it's too expensive to exhibit your work. Yeah, because they won't fund me. Some people get funded by the university that they work at or the venue that they're going to be exhibiting at. But I, at that time, uh, did not get any funding because I wasn't associated with the university. I wasn't associated with the museum or uh, academia in general. So I did not want to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on an exhibit. So people would ask me, sometimes I would show here and there. I would just, uh, you know, one time I remember getting some photographs and put them on the wall and they had these little clips and then glass. I would put the photographs on the wall and clip some glass on. They had these L clips. I still have them today. I got the glass uh, made from, uh, I, you know, the eight and a half by, I mean, eight by 10, you know, glass sheets I got from my sister and brother-in-law's uh, business. Residential glass and screen in, in San Jose, California. They cut the glass and we sanded the edges and, made about 25 of them for the exhibit. So I just had to print, put the glass on there, put the clips, and I was good. So that was an exhibition in San Jose, a very rudimentary exhibit. Some of my friends that I had at the time, John Maroca and others, were professors and uh, instructors at universities and community colleges. And they would say, hey, so you got to have it at a certain height. This is how you do it. you got to make sure it's archivally, you know, processed. Of course, a lot of those things I already knew, but a lot of my friends 
that I hung out with were other photographers and artists, especially people in theater. So that venue specifically was a theater, and I exhibited my the photographs of theater, okay? After, uh, you know, working in television, if I think it was 19... Uh, uh, what year was it? 76? I was working in television in 1977. I started working in radio, and then to 1980 and 1980 on, I again exhibited in San Jose, and I started exhibiting a little bit here. There, people ex actually asked me to exhibit. And in my uh, studio space, I actually had an exhibition space where I printed photographs. And other photographers would use my dark room, my studio, to do you know portraits of individuals, models, portfolios, and just use my dark room just to put you know produce prints, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was very open. Had a lot of my friends come over, and we hung out. We took pictures and of people and stuff in my studio space. It was a lot of fun, again, in Silicon Valley. I had the opportunity to photograph a lot of the folks in Silicon Valley. Commercial photographs, you know, I, would, I was working for the Bis San Jose Business Journal, the various publications down there, and I would photograph, you know, uh, Gordon Moore, uh, various uh, people in Silicon Valley. I would go to the CEOs, you know, all these companies, and I would pose a CEO and take a portrait of them, you know, you know, or man or woman in their offices or in their boardrooms, et cetera, or in front of their businesses, and I would do a lot of portraits. I would even do the group portrait for the uh, business, the San Jose business or like the like staff. I photographed the whole group, you know, and stuff like that. The list would go on and on, all the different stories. Hey, Jesus, we're doing a story on this. I would photograph him. Uh, that's along with my uh, portrait studio in uh, Silicon Valley. I did weddings, quinceañeras events like that, and portraits. Again, I had a studio, backdrops, Hasselblads, various iterations of Hasselblads, 45, 4x5s, 5x7 cameras, etc., etc. So eventually, uh, uh, I started exhibiting in San Francisco again, like at the you know Mission Cultural Center, I think it was in uh, 1998, and at various galleries in San Francisco, like Balasso Gallery, all these different artsy-fartsy events in San Francisco in the late 90s. And that's when I met my wife, uh, who later became an academic. She was a director of a, of a film department at a university down there, and where I was teaching also another job. I work in another university, teaching my photo studio life and uh, my freelance life, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, just to make ends meet. As you very well know, as very many of you know, San Francisco is rather expensive. You do what you can to pay the bills. So my wife, I married my wife in, I think it was uh, 96, 95. I forget. I apologize. Uh, so uh, and then eventually in 2000, um, actually 1999, my wife and I left uh, San Francisco so she could get her PhD, master's degree, at the University of Texas at Austin. And there I worked for various companies doing their photography, marketing, even photo sales. I worked at uh, Precision Camera as their sales manager for what that was worth. Not a very good job. <laughs> One of the most painful experiences in my life. The manager... The owner of the place treated me like absolute garbage. So I left that job as soon as I could to get a, a job somewhere else. So I took photographs for, you know, companies, you know, utilities. And I also worked uh, weekends at radio. KLBJ News Radio 590, Austin, Texas. I still remember all the little uh, things we had to say. And so I did a lot of news work in Austin, Texas. I really enjoy radio, not so much television, but I enjoy radio quite a bit, doing news production, writing stories, editing stories, and of course, anchoring the news. It was a lot of fun uh, in uh, Austin, Texas. I did that for many, many years. And then eventually, uh, my wife got a job somewhere else. I say, yeah, I graduated university, I got my PhD, I was offered a job at the University of Redlands. So we went to the University of Redlands where my wife got a job. We went to quite a bit to LA events. Uh, going through traffic takes about an hour, two hours to get to LA. So we would go to Cal State LA, UCLA, uh, Northridge University, Cal State Pomona events, arts events. So we got very well entrenched 
in the arts community from about, uh, I think it was around uh, 2005 to 2012. Okay, so we were working the L.A. market, and I got asked to exhibit quite a bit in the, the area from Redlands to other uh, communities, L.A., you know. So I was exhibiting a lot, you know, Riverside. You know, people asked me to exhibit in Riverside everywhere. In fact, I had, you know, I remember one time I was at, I was exhibiting here and somebody else asked me to exhibit at this gallery and I said, uh, I think it was a Univer uh, Riverside Arts Museum, RAM. They asked me to exhibit there and I said, no. So I told my wife, would you like to do a, an exhibit there? Ask some of your the women you know that you've been doing research on, would they like to have an exhibit there? So she did an exhibition of women photographers, Laura, you know, Laura, I think it was Laura, I forget her name, but she, very important photographers who have recently passed. Very important photographer. So she had an exhibition down there, okay? So one of the things I did uh, when I was at the university uh, exhibiting, my wife uh, was at the University of Rensa Jesus. I, I, asked, I told the people here that you would exhibit your work because they've been asking me to exhibit your photographs, your documentary photographs. And I said, I, we would. Would you do it, Jesus? And I said, uh, it's going to be expensive. I don't want to. I don't want to spend all that money unless the university gives me money. Of course, the university didn't want to give me money. So uh, if, unless you're a professor at a university or actually you know, working at the university as a photographer, instructor, you're not going to get any money from them. They're not going to give me any money. They never gave me any money. So I had to spend my own cash. I told them, it's going to be expensive. So we spent about $3,000 on, uh, you know, frames, mats, windows, glazing, these, you know, and I did it all high quality. Let me just show you one photograph right here. So this photograph right here, this photograph right here to uh, the frame, the mat, the backing, all archival and UV uh, acrylic glaze, glazing, it all uh, adds up to about $300. Again, $300 times <laughs> 30 photographs to be exhibited. It's expensive, rather expensive. So I've been reusing those photographs and those mats, everything. They're primarily 8x8 eight eight openings. So if I wanted to exhibit a photograph, I'd say, hey, let's print those all. We'll see. Photographs 8x8 eight eight on 85 by 11 you know, 100% rag, inkjet printer, using, uh, you know, high quality, high quality uh, inkjet inks, okay? So, so I've had exhibitions uh, with those frames different photographs in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, Maryland, L.A., different galleries there, San Francisco, San Jose. <laughs> Even here in Fort Worth, they, they said, Jesus, we're doing a Chica, uh, Cesar Chavez celebration, and would you like to exhibit your photographs here at the main library, the Rotunda? Beautiful Rotunda, beautiful Rotunda. And uh, I said, okay, I'll, so I just grab my box of photographs of the last exhibition I put them up there it was pretty easy and they all said hey you did great work on short uh, notice of Garza I said thank you very much thank you very much so I gave a lecture like I always do at the various galleries and community colleges universities and museums that I've had the opportunity to show my work at I've even spoken before the Smithsonian Institution for the you know promoting the Smithsonian Institution for various organizations in Washington, D.C. And my work is in the collection uh, of the Smithsonian. So it's a rather valuable, I think, valuable collection. So, again, uh, my main uh, body of work is 1970, 1975, of the Chicano community in San Jose, California. Some uh, museums contact me, like from Bordeaux, France, at the Musée de Aquitaine, a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous museum. They had a very large uh, exhibition in which a lot of dignitaries in the Chicano community from L.A. spoke. Uh, you know, it was a big exhibition. But the museums contacted me, not the University of UCLA, which was closely tied to this exhibition. The museum contacted me and said, hey, would you like to exhibit some of your work here? And I said, okay. So I sent them a bunch of digital files, rather large digital files, to the point where they can print a 4x5 print. 
So they, so they printed one four by five, and I think it was another five, uh, you know, just standard 11 by 14 size prints. Worked out pretty good for them. So I sent them the files. They invited me over to stay, but I said, nah, it's all right. I'm, uh, I have a lot of work to do here. And when, at that time, I think I was in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas, okay? So I had to teach some classes, extension courses, fun times. So uh, I've exhibited there. They thought I was a Southern California photographer. They conflated Southern with Northern California. All these photographers and artists that were part of this uh, exhibition were from L.A., Los Angeles. The folks at UCLA know this, these people. So they invite them, hey, let's, uh, let's do another exhibition. Let's do it in Bordeaux, France. We'll pay for it. But uh, the museum actually contacted me and said, hey, can you exhibit some yourself? I said, okay. So they thought I was from L.A. I was from, I'm a San Jose, California dude, okay? But it was nice having a show there. And another UCLA exhibit in uh, Mexico City at the main university was there. And the folks at Mexico City said, hey, Jesus, would you like to exhibit some of your photographs of Cesar Chavez and other important leaders? I said, okay, I'll send you some photographs, digital files, very large digital files, so they come out good. Again, I have my own scanner, high-quality scanner. Helps to have a high quality scanner. Not one of those built in piece of crap scanners, actually a high quality scanner, a film scanner, uh, you know, print scanner. So uh, I did my own scans and they were super high quality. And of course, I edited them, I cleaned everything up, all the old dust spots and scratches, I cleaned them up. So that's how I've been getting some of my major international exhibits in Mexico, Europe, and such like that. Uh, but I still continue to exhibit today, especially in San Jose at the university, at San Jose State University, they've always asked me, this is, can you show this, can you show that? I, uh, a few years back, I was I exhibited about, a, I think it was almost close to 100 photographs. I sent them files, digital files on an SD card. I put it in a little envelope, wrapped it up very nicely, and sent them a SD card with a bunch of photographs, big files. And they printed them, and they showed them. They made an Average size print they made was like about uh, two feet by three feet. They were big prints. They have a big inkjet printer in there, in the at the university. They were just printing them out. Just imagine what I had to pay for these prints. That's expensive. They framed them and they did it and they showed it all over the place, all over at the university. Very nice because I'm a San Jose State graduate. They're very proud of me, uh, especially in the Chicano academic sphere. I'm relatively well-known, not tremendously well-known, but relatively well-known, especially in San Jose. I'm very well-known, okay? So I had exhibitions there, and uh, the photographs in uh, France were digital files. I sent in Mexico, I sent digital files. So I've been sending digital files here and there, along with, uh, you know, photographs for books, magazines, etc. You know, cover photographs, the list goes on and on. So again, uh, it's expensive exhibiting my work. I've turned down many an exhibit because I am not willing to spend the cash. But since my wife uh, forced me to ex do this exhibit at the University of Redlands, I have these frames and I can print via you know, a nice inkjet printer, uh, pigment-based, and I can make some nice high-quality prints and put them in the frame. As long as they're 8 by 8 I have some prints that may be 8 by 10 and I'm thinking about buying some new frames for those, some nice, I think they're four ply, again, archival, 100% cotton, high quality matting materials. And the glazing again is UV acrylic, you know. Top of the line, top of the line. So I hope you're doing fantastic. If you've any questions about my uh, photographs, my exhibitions, et cetera, et cetera, you know, leave them below. Again, leave your kind and friendly comments, suggestions, uh, any questions uh, below. Abajo. Muchos, muchos gracias. Especially you newbies. Just starting out, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to have a long conversation with you about how to exhibit your work. I learned a lot from my friends, John Mato Oka, who uh, passed away about five, ten years ago. He was a, he was a, a professor at a, one of the universities in the no, uh, colleges in Silicon Valley helped me a lot. We worked a lot together. We're very close friends. And other photographers, we worked together. You know, fashion photographers, you know, 
<laughs> uh, glamour photographers and wedding and event photographers. So hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to get over the 3,000 subscriber mark. Uh, dare to dream. And again, if you want to exhibit my work, you have to contact me. Send me a nice letter and say, Jesus, would you like to exhibit your work here? And uh, there is a possibility. There is a possibility I might be interested and motivated to exhibit my work. Typically, a lot of folks that exhibit their work are academics or work in the academic sphere or connected to some academic institution or, you know, buddy, buddy. So it's a pro, quid pro quo. Uh, I'll exhibit at your university if... Uh, if you exhibit your work in my university, so we exchange, you know, your work goes in mine, mine goes in yours, and we call it good. And people go to those little, you know, academic photography events and they talk about photography and we, they interchange ideas. Hey, I got an opening in January, uh, the month of January for two months, January, February of 2025. Would you be interested in uh, showing your work? Yeah, I'll be more than happy. I could. I can even get the university to pay for me to be down there for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and uh, the university already paid for most of my equipment. And, and I can use the university equipment to make my prints and do my... And I just have a lot of frames I've ordered over the years. We could just do an exhibition. No problem. We'll just do it. It doesn't cost me anything. And the university is going to pay for me. Uh, my wife... I've learned from her experience, she's at a university as a professor. These, some of these professors can go for like a week or two somewhere in the middle of the semester and go do a lecture, go do a, an exhibition, uh, go do a presentation, and they get the university to fund them. I know my wife sometimes goes to a conference and the university pays for it, pays for her air travel, pays for a hotel, etc., going to New York, going to Chicago, going to L.A., going to San Francisco. That's how it works. As for me, she always says, uh, uh, you're going to have to stay home and mow the lawn because they're only paying for me because I'm an academic. I am covered by the university. You're not working at the university. You're not covered by the university. So I imagine a lot of photographers, painters, sculptors, you know, uh, ceramicists, they go, hey, I'm going to be going to, I remember one going to Australia for a couple weeks. Wow. Just in the middle of semester, I'm going to have a, the adjunct fill in for me for those two weeks. Well, I'm in Australia and the university's paying for it. Very nice. So there's different realities for different artists. Uh, what can I say? I am not one of those artists. I am just a guy who's worked in radio, who's worked in television, who's worked in print, has had his own photo studio, worked in marketing, and uh, has exhibited his work uh, sporadically here and there. What can I say? Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and leave your kind and friendly comments below, and ring the bell for future notifications. Muchas gracias. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, where it's about 100 degrees again. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.